assuming you have not started the car in a while, is to turn the valve on below the vacuum tank. And that would be this little valve right here that I'm pointing to. You turn it all the way out to have it on, all the way in would shut it off. Now, assuming you haven't run it in a while, you're going to turn it all the way out. This provides your fuel to the carburetor. The second step you're going to have in starting the Kissel is to open the passenger side of the hood. This is assuming, again, you haven't started it in a while and you just turned on your fuel. You're going to take a large screwdriver, you're going to remove the top piece on the carburetor right here that I've got the screwdriver in. Now, I'm not going to remove it right now, but if you remove it, you'll find out that's where your float valve is located. You're going to pull up on the float valve because if this carburetor is dry, you actually want to pull up on the float valve because you have very low head pressure that will help you fill up your carburetor quickly. Your door handles here. Something important to know. I'm going to open it with the outside. Door handle goes back. Do not force the door handle forward. We've already seen somebody break a handle that way. Don't do that. It's made to go backwards. If you're not sure about it, open the window and use the outside handle. It's because too many people for some reason think you're supposed to push these forward and that's not the way they work. They go backwards. All right, having talked about that, let's talk about what else there is on the car here, original as well as things that are modified. On the driver's side, there is a signal light system installed. Obviously not original. Most people don't know hand signals anymore, so we've got signal lights installed in the car. Now the way they work is we use the cowl lamps for the front signal light. So if you look on the passenger side, Miss Trish will show you that we have got a flashing cowl lamp on the outside of the car. So they use the cowl lamps for the front. In the rear, we use the tail light assembly. We showed you one side of the signal light. Now we're showing you the opposite side of the signal light. Same thing is true. We're using the cowl lamp and the tail lamp. We also have an emergency light system, as one would be used to for hazard lights. That's also on here. This is wired in. This is obviously not original. It is a safety feature. In the center of the steering column, as I mentioned earlier, left-hand control we ignore. It's all hooked up. It's not in use. It's not necessary, but all the linkages are in place. The other control here is for a hand throttle. The only way to properly use the Kissel hand throttle is to step your pedal down part way, then bring your hand throttle in place to hold the pedal down. If you try to pull with this merely alone, instead of presetting the pedal, you're going to have troubles with it. So you want to always set the pedal first, then move the hand throttle if you're going to use it. Okay. It's particular the way Kissel set it up. It looks like it's really only good for running at a slow speed. It's not something to be running at high speed with. Center, this is your horn button. <coughs> Works beautifully. All you have to do is press down on it. It's just fine. Everything's good. All right, the item that's currently in view. That is the control that is used to run the exhaust gas heater on the back floor. Everything is installed for it. Everything we believe is sealed properly, but it is up to the new owner to decide if they want to make it fully operational. To make it fully operational, remove the piece down on the exhaust pipe that this little ring and chain are connected to. Cut the slot in. You'll understand it when you take it off. You'll see what I mean. Cut the slot so the valve will work. Put it back together. Everything's operational. Right now, it is made to look operational but it is definitely not running the exhaust gas heater. So that's the exhaust gas heater control. Up above, the other control right here, this little foot button, 
That little foot button happens to be a high low beam switch. We do not know if this was original to the car. It was in the car when we got it, it has been put back. Your high low beams are actually controlled down here on the floor. They are not going to be controlled by the dash, they're on the floor. This particular pedal that I put my hand on right now, that's obviously your brake pedal. The brakes in this car are Lockheed hydraulics. They're extremely early. They're not like the hydraulics we're used to. They stop the car just fine, but they don't feel like modern hydraulics, and it's not that they're not bled. It's just a very odd system. And you'll find when I step on it, it's going to return just like normal. But the way that actually is working that's very unique is there's no return spring system on it. It's all by pressure off of the wheel cylinders that it comes back. So it's not like a modern hydraulic system. In the event you think you're not getting good pedal pressure, we're gonna show you in a little bit how you put your pedal pressure back. Next over is the accelerator, as we said, and also your starter switch. Those are your floor controls. When we go over to our shift here, I'm gonna show you a couple things. The shift really does have a little lock and a little door here. The shift lock works. However, it is hard to operate. And there's nothing wrong with it, it's just touchy. Everything works fine, it's just touchy. I'd probably never lock it, but it can be locked and unlocked if you want to. Your shift in neutral, side to side. Your shift pattern is gonna be just like it is in most floor shifts like you'd be used to. Reverse, forward here, first, back here, second, up here, third, down here. Two things to remember here. The throw on this is extremely short. I'm gonna show you how throw short it is. That's reverse. Back to neutral, that's first. There might be a total of one inch throw in this particular transmission, that's the way it's built. Same thing's gonna be true on second and third. It's also a non-synchro mesh, so you have to double clutch the car. That's the shift. Here is your handbrake, or your parking brake, or your emergency brake, however you want to put it. To take it off, press down with your thumb, pull back just slightly, forward, it's off. Press it down, pull back, it's on. This emergency brake is so powerful, I actually use it just through when I'm moving it around at slow speed, it, it stops the whole car. It's tremendously large. So it's actually a really good way to stop the car if you're just going slow speed anyway. And you don't even have to use the brakes. You can just use your emergency or parking brake. It is big and it will stop the car sharply. We're going to talk about the seats. The seats in the car are very unique. This might be the only surviving Kissel with these seats. Kissel invented sliding seat tracks back in the late teens and this has got the original real Kissel sliding seat tracks. So we have an outside and inside track and then we have this center piece here. The center piece has an eccentric in it which is controlled by the handle which Trish is going to come here and show you the handle between the seats. Each seat has a handle. And they're right here. This is the handle down in here. Now forward releases the seat, backward locks the seat. When it's locked, this seat's not gonna go anywhere because that eccentric on the end of this handle is in the center piece and it is absolutely locked in place. Now, if I release it, this entire seat will move fore and aft a tremendous amount. So this has sliding lockable seats in it that were built by Kissel themselves. We've already talked to you about how to turn on the car. We've talked to you about the choke. Now we're going to talk to you about what to do with the headlights. Remember, we told you you have a high low beam on the floor. The only thing you ever do with the headlights in this car, flip that portion of the switch to on. The only two things you're going to do with the switch, contrary to all the markings, is you can turn the car on or you can turn the headlights on and off. That is the two things you're using it for. The rest of this, you have a dimmer switch. So forget the rest of the markings. Down here, this little switch here, this is your instrument lighting. 
Instrument lighting is really hard to see when we're in all this sunlight out here. We may not be able to actually see it. But what happens is, is all the way in is off, all the way out is effectively off. You have to position halfway in between, roughly. That's the way the switch is. There's nothing wrong with it. It's apparently how it's built. So you position about halfway in between and you get indirect dash lighting. Kissel is extremely early with indirect dash lighting, but as I said in the sunlight out here, we probably can't even see it because it's, you know, dim like they would be back then. Next control, this little rod here, that opens your cowl vent. So when it's pulled towards you, the cowl vent is open. When it's pushed away, the cowl vent is closed. This particular control here controls resetting the trip odometer. You push it up and turn it, and you can reset the trip odometer right here. Okay, so that's what this is for. That's a trip odometer. Your gasoline gauge is really a barometer. This is connected to the rear tank, and it's, as I said, it's basically a barometer that is what you're dealing with here. So it's done all on air pressures, it's not electric. Amp gauge, we already know about, we've talked about that a little bit, oil gauge we've talked about. And here we've got a modern substitute clock, but the exterior of it is exactly to look like original, so it looks original, but this one always works. Next to the clock, we have the little fuse door. Kissel gives you three fuses. In the event you burn out a fuse, just use the size glass fuse we've used and it'll work just fine. Those are all the fuses in the car located right there on the little fuse door. Right here we have an accessory item. This is a smoking kit. We don't think anybody's probably going to ever want to smoke in the car. We have not hooked it up. If you want to hook it up, you can, but it is not hooked up. It is located here as an accessory smoking kit. Each side of the window has a little lock mechanism and a slider. You can undo these, one on each side, and you can slide the windshield out, lock it down in the position you want. So it's another way to ventilate the car, the way it was done originally. Up here at the top, we have an electric windshield wiper. The electric windshield wiper on off works beautifully, so you actually have a working windshield wiper. And it has a park function. So that works real nice. Kissel provided a rather unique rear view mirror with two mirrors on it, adjustable by hand, however you want to have them. It's just a little different from a normal single mirror system. This switch right here controls your dome light. Flipping that up gives you a dome light. That's original Kissel dome light and switches and everything. Works beautifully. The car is also equipped with an original Kissel brake light switch which should be picked up right now. In the rear seat of the car, there is also a window shade that can be pulled down. We leave it in the up position normally so you can actually see out as the driver. Back on the passenger side of the car, a couple of things to note that are important. Right here is your remote filler tank for your brake system. What you have to do in order to add fluid into the system, there are two different ways you can do it. One is unscrew this as I'm doing it right here. And once I get it completely unscrewed, see it jumps up because it's got that little spring. This is actually a pump. And this is pumping a small amount of brake fluid down into the system. We have a Willwood one-way valve we put in down below to ensure that it's only going one way. Now you can screw this back down and what you've done is you've actually charged up the system with a little more fluid if you want to. The other way to do this is you unscrew this portion as I showed you, plus you unscrew at the knurled area. Now you can fill this tank with brake fluid as necessary and this is using DOT3 brake fluid. The trunk has two latches, one on each side. The keys are different 
for each latch. Okay, these are not identical keys. So if you lock them, always remember one key will work one latch, one key will work the other latch, it won't work both of them. 